Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I'm going to be using the Geometric Line Stencil, the Happy Plant Stamps and Dies, and the I'm Rooting For You Sentiments, which also have matching dies if you're interested in that. So I wanted to do a little scene card here with these little happy plants. I thought that that would be cute because um, you know I love a scene card. But let me tell you, I guess, where the idea for this card came. So on my YouTube channel, um, this very nice lady named Debbie had left me a message and had asked me if I would be willing to send a card to her, I believe it's her brother-in-law, um, who has cancer, who lives in a neighboring city, um, which is a hard request to turn down, obviously, um, because, you know, that is, it's a hard thing, um, but it's a hard thing to make a card for somebody that you don't know also. And so that's where I guess the, the happy plants kind of came in to save the day because they're such good neutral images um, that you can turn them into a whole bunch of things, um, whether that's somebody that you're, you know, family or friends with or somebody that maybe you are not as familiar with. And that's how I kind of picked this stamp set to work with. So since I wanted to do a scene card, um, I had... I told you, I think, more re in a more recent video that I really have not been using my oxides very much, and I haven't. Um, so I decided it was kind of time to break those back out, and they do make a softer background, which is nice. So I selected the scattered straw to act as my wallpaper <laughs> in my scene card, and so I'm not being very heavy-handed with this. I am putting down color, and oxides do blend better than... Um, distress inks you don't have to do as much work but I wanted it to be really soft because I wanted to create the wallpaper look with the stencil now just some tips for the stencil I did not put any other adhesive on mine I just laid it down and then I taped it this was probably a mistake on my part I was able to make it work um, but it is a more intricate stencil and so you'll see when I'm applying the color I'm not um, doing traditional ink blending where you're kind of starting off the paper and bringing it um, in small circles onto the page. I'm starting on the card and then I'm just doing small circles by just turning the um, foam applicator so that I can put some color down um, in those areas without really moving the stencil very much. I am working with my I'm right hand dominant, I'm working with my right hand and then kind of using my left hand to keep the stencil, um, the rest of it from moving. I did have good luck with this, um, but the next time I use the stencil, I will probably use some sort of spray adhesive or my Tombow Mono Multi Glue um, just to kind of keep it in place a little bit better. Um, it's just with these intricate stencils, you know, sometimes you got to adjust maybe the way that you normally do it. I typically do put the Tombow Mono Multi Glue on the back of mine since it does dry repositionable, but I was rushing and it was a lot of lines to put them on, so I didn't do it this time. But nonetheless, I was happy with the way it came out. I did add a little bit more color kind of around the edges so that it was more blended in around the edges. Like I had a darker saturation of color. And I didn't mention it when we first started, um, but you can see I have a mask there that's protecting my baseboard. I'm going to leave my baseboard white, and then I am going to use Hickory Smoke, which is a really pretty gray color, for my carpet. Um, you could certainly turn this into a wood floor if you wanted to, um, or tile or whatever, if you wanted to put a little bit more work into it. You all know I got a new baby, so I'm doing what I can with the time that I have. And um, in fact, I'm doing this right now while she is napping because I was trying not to leave my husband completely solo since I do have to work tonight. I did go back to work. Yeah, that's how long it's been. Um, so here I've laid out all my stamps. I knew I was going to die cut them out. Um, so I had to give myself enough room to fit all of the dies. Um, which sometimes I find a little bit challenging because it's hard for me to find a place to put my magnet <laughs> um, just because I'm trying to fit so many stamps on the paper at one time. But I'm going to stamp these in our Be Creative Black Ink, which is safe for alcohol markers because I'm going to be coloring with my Copics. Um, 
so yeah, I went back to work last night was my first night back. And I am so tired today. <laughs> it's been a long time since I had to stay up all night long. Um, you know, and like be functional. Um, where I wasn't, you know, like catnapping throughout the day and things like that. I got home at about seven o'clock this morning. Um, and was probably asleep by 7.30 and then got up at 2, went and got, um, picked up the kids and came home, um, visited with my husband for a little bit. And then, um, I started doing this voiceover when I got Caitlin to nap. Um, but then once I'm done with this, then I'm, you know, I'm packing my lunch and I'm back to work. Uh, that's the joy of 12 hour shifts, which eight hours is a little bit easier to do when you're, you know, I mean, you have more time to spend with your kids each day, but 12 hours gives you more days off. So then I have more full days that I can see them. Um, I don't, I, I mean, I don't really know what the, uh, what the answer is. We're all just trying to make do, right? Um, touch back on the card real quick. So here I've picked just a couple of different greens um, and here's where I realized that my G07 actually had dried up and I didn't own the reinker. Um, so that was another one that I had to, I had to pick up the reinker uh, when I ordered my E55 that I told you about the other day that's just vanished and disappeared. But this particular plant is a Monstera and why do I know that? Because you know, if you've watched my videos over the years, you know that I am a plant murderer. Not on purpose. I'm not, um, you know, I'm not trying to kill them, but I'm not really good at keeping them alive. <laughs> uh, not a skill I acquired. Um, but about a year and a half ago, for staging purposes for our furniture, I picked up a Monstera and when it came, it was just like this little teeny tiny bud. And that was about a year and a half, two-ish years ago. I'm not really sure when I purchased it, but it has gotten a lot bigger. I've managed to keep it alive. However, I leave it, they don't like direct sunlight. So I left it on my kitchen countertop by the back patio doors. So all this light filters in, but it's not directly in the sun. Plus, I picked this one because they get large and they are not finicky. They're kind of survivalists and you don't have to spend a whole lot of time um, remembering to water them. They don't really like a lot of water. Uh, but anyway, so the problem with where I put it is my plant then grew towards the light. And so it's almost like hanging out of its planter because it has grown so far this way as it's gotten bigger. So I just moved it into our front room with the, it gets, it just gets a different amount of sunlight. Um, but I moved it so that the back of it is to the sunlight. So I'm hoping it will kind of straighten itself out. I don't even know if that's really a thing that works, but here's hoping. We went to Friendsgiving uh, this is something that Eric's friends do. It's like a Thanksgiving, but, you know, with your friends. And they've been doing it for years. And so we went to Friendsgiving at his friend Joe's house. And I was talking to his wife because she had these plants in the corner. And one of them was very obviously a Monstera. And it was huge. It was enormous. And I was like, girl, how you get your Monstera so big? And she said that she puts hers in the summer. She puts it outside on like the um, screen enclosed patio. And like, because it's, you know, like hot and humid, she thinks that that is why it did so well. So I may try to put mine outside this summer, um, but I'm not really sure because as first stated, I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, so we'll have to see if that works. The other two um, plants that I chose, I just thought the vine one was really pretty. Um, and then this one looks um, almost like a lily, like a 
something going on there and so I thought it would be nice to kind of break up all of the green but I did choose three different green color combinations um, that I thought were complementary to each other but weren't going to just give me the same kind of one note uh, appearance because you know in real life plants aren't all the same shade of green um, you know there's different things I do have a couple of other plants that have not survived so when Graham passed away I ended up with three different plants um, one of them had little pink flowers on it and I looked it up and I can't remember the name of it, but it, it was turned out to be a tropical uh, flower. And so that one is like somewhere, that one is in purgatory. It's somewhere between life and death. Sometimes it has green leaves, sometimes not. I'm not really sure where it's at on its journey, but nonetheless, I keep trying to bring it back to life. There's another one that is a, it looks like a hosta. You know, it has like the green with the white veins in it. Um, and that one is actually doing well. That one has gotten bigger. Um, and then there was another one that looked like a hosta with the leaves, but then the coloring, not so much. It was green and had like red veins in it. And my sister, I think, told me one time what she thought it was, but I don't remember. But that one, again, it's more dead than alive. It has no greenery on it, but the middle of the stalk is still green. So I'm trying to resuscitate that one as well. Um, I did repot them over the summer, and I was kind of hoping that would help, but a lot of, I think for most of them, it hurt. It hurt it. Um, because again, I don't know what I'm doing. I have a large one. Well, when we went to, where was it? Was it Home Depot or Lowe's? I can't remember. We went to the store and this is, you know, during the summertime when they're selling all the plants and Peanut talked me into buying him this tropical flower thing. It almost looks like, um, like the leaves on it almost look like a pineapple, but then it just had one like really bright red flower and I didn't want to buy it because I did not think he would take care of it, but he talked me into it. It's one of those ice cube ones. Honestly, both the ones we bought that day are those ice cube ones where you only put six ice cubes in for the week and then they're fine. Um, so his is, it appears to be dead, but nothing's falling off of it. So I don't know if it's just dormant not really sure there. The other one um, has kind of like heart-shaped drop leaves with red flowers that are almost shaped like a calla lily shape, um, but I don't believe they're calla lilies. Uh, but those ones, when I read about them, they were supposed to get bigger as well, and so that's why I purchased that one. But it is, again, it's an ice cube one. That one's doing okay. So needless to say, the plant whisperer, I am not, but I have managed to keep just, just a couple of them alive. And for that, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back because previously they all would have been dead very, very quickly. So, you know, personal growth. Um, so for the vine one, I did some blue greens for the Monstera. I did like more traditional greens and for this Lily, I'm going to do yellow greens um, so you can see that there are, you know, differences in the way that they look, but it's nothing that's going to be so, um, different that it's like clashing. And then I kept my pots all neutral colors. I chose the, the yellow gray combination. That's what Peanuts Nursery was, um, because I didn't know what I was having. It was a, I, he was a surprise. Um, so we went with neutral colors of yellow and gray, um, of course, with Caitlin's, I picked a gray color, but it was more on the blue side. Uh, the theme of her nursery was, um, is you are my sunshine and Nathan's was elephants. Um, cause that's what was, you know, the thing back then. Elephants are probably still the thing. Honestly, I don't know. Um, but they, so I thought the yellow and the gray would look nice together. And then I kept it just really neutral with the plants so that the like are with the potted portion of the plants so that way the stars of the show were in fact the plants 
and then for the like lilies that are in this or whatever flower they are uh I just went with a little bit of yellow and some grays just to give them some shading so that they didn't look flat comparative to all the other coloring I hope that makes sense and then like we've talked about before how you know die cuts aren't necessarily my favorite thing but I will tell you that I do enjoy having the option because sometimes I don't have the time or the patience or it doesn't make sense to fussy cut them for example this vine uh, plant here I would never fussy cut that ever 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 never because it would just be so frustrating and time consuming and challenging to make look good that it wouldn't even be worth it. So I do enjoy being able to have the options for the dyes. I could have colored around the white border like you've seen me do in the past to disguise that. But honestly, with this card, it really didn't bother me all that much. And so I just decided that I was going to leave it and be okay with it. These neutrals that I've been telling you about in the vast wide world of Copic markers, they have cool grays, toner grays, neutral grays, and warm grays. I've seen other people with the toners and I've seen other people with the neutrals. And while there are some subtle differences, I only chose to invest my money in the cool grays and the warm grays because to me those have enough difference to be significant. Um, and you'll see here, because we're going to color them right next to each other, what the difference between the two is. Currently, these are the warm grays. Um, and honestly, like I do find myself using my grays quite a bit. And I'm never really sad that I don't have the other two. Um, so if you are a person who is new to Copic markers or you're looking to expand your collection and you don't have grays, um, I would get the cool and I would get the warm. The ones in the middle are, you know, questionable. They're, um, I don't know, I just didn't see it worth spending the money when I could be buying a whole other set of really pretty colors that I could use, you know, to color other things on my cards. But yeah, so going back to work, um, crazy. It feels like I never even left there and I don't even know how that can be a thing because I've been gone for three months. So I don't even know how it can feel like there was never a break from that place. <laughs> but that is exactly how it felt. Like I walked in, uh, it was a Christmas miracle that I remembered my passwords because there's so many things that we have to log into. Um, they were very generous and they actually had uh, my friend Angie, who I've previously talked about in another video, she and I worked together. Um, so she sat with me for the first hour or so just to make sure that I knew any of like the procedural changes or anything that had happened since I had gone out. Because that stuff is, you know, it's fluid. It's always changing. The way that we do things is always changing. The laws are always changing. Um, and so, and sometimes even the equipment or the software that we're using changes. Fortunately, um, it wasn't anything that was too crazy. And I was able to um, let her go, you know, after just a couple of hours after she answered all my questions. And then the rest of the night was, was fine. It's just been a really long time since... I had to stay up, you know, that late. And then we just have to adjust to a new schedule. That's all it is. It was the same way when Eric first went back to work, we had to adjust to his new schedule. Um, and so now we're doing the same thing. So I outlined all of my images before I die cut them because I don't want to chase them around. I'm putting all my die cuts in place and then I'm going to run that through my Spellbinders Platinum to cut them out. So then that way I can start building my card. Here I kind of had already figured out off camera what I wanted to go with what, um, you know, which plant with which pot. And the reason that I chose the pots that I did is because I wanted to stagger the height of them. They do have plant stands in this set as well, which you could totally use. Um, but I chose not to. I chose to just put them right on the floor. 
because that's how it was at Friendsgiving. The the Eric's, um, you know, friend, she had hers just collected in the corner and I thought it was super cute. So in picking a sentiment for somebody that, first of all, I don't know. And second of all, somebody who's having a very challenging time in life. I try not to send like sympathy or I'm so sorry or whatever um, unless, you know, I know that person well or there's been a, you know, someone's passed away. Um, So I really just wanted to send more of an encouragement card. So I picked the sentiment that says I'm rooting for you, which is cute with the plants, right? It's adorable. I know you don't have to tell me. Um, And then I'm going to turn that into a picture frame to fit into my scene. So I did all of my lines first with pencil. I spared you that. Um, And then I'm going back through with a alcohol safe pen to, um, you know, outline that after it was all done and I knew where all my lines were supposed to be. And then I really didn't even do any shading on this. I just took a warm gray because I was, again, trying to tie in those neutrals. And I chose a W7 because it was a little bit darker. Um, And then I just filled in the whole thing. You could definitely add more shading to this for sure. I just didn't really feel like it needed it. So once I cut that out, I just cut it out with my paper trimmer so my edges were straight. I am going to um, glue my background down and then um, start building up those plants. So the way that I did the plants is I first glued the plant to the planter to make them one piece. And then that way I could just glue them as one full piece. The ones in the background I glued flat um, just to have multi-levels of dimension I guess. So the tallest one, this Monstera, I glued down flat and then the next one with the vine, um, or I'm sorry, the one with the lily, I'm also going to glue that down flat, but they do kind of overlap a little. Um, So there's a little bit of differentiation, but not much. Um, And then for the vine one, I'm going to add some foam tape to it And then the same thing for my sentiment sign that I've created for my scene. I'm going to add some foam tape to that as well, just so that there's a little bit of extra dimension and a little bit more interest. You know, I like to do that. And then, um, like, pretty much that's going to be the whole card. So, in conclusion, I hope that it gave you some ideas for maybe creating some cards where your recipient is somebody that you want to reach out to but maybe you don't know that well um or you know maybe you're just starting to build your relationship with them there's a lot of really good images that are out there to do that with and plants are one of them so I did go back in and just add some highlights with my white gel pen because I can never leave well enough alone (laughs) can't do it, can never leave well enough alone. But I did leave off the glitters for this one. um, Just because like I said, I don't really, I don't know if you would want a glittery card. Some people do, some people don't. So nonetheless, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you spending your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.